welcome everyone. We've got some seats here in the front if anyone would like to take a seat and settle, settle in. Um, to everyone here this afternoon, a warm welcome, including those sitting in Johannesburg virtually, welcome. This afternoon is about acknowledgement, acknowledging all the moms, the work moms, the dads who are moms, the grandmothers, and the friends of family who form part of the family unit and nurture and protect. Welcome. Um, it's all about acknowledging the day and acknowledging the value of a mother in a household and all that they do for us every single day. Often without a thank you, often without a recognition, a mother's role in any home is really, really valued. In the famous words of Maya Angelou, every time a woman stands up for herself, without knowing it, without claiming it, she stands up for all women, for mankind, each one of us born of a woman. And I think it's so important to know that each and every one of us here today have been born of a woman and we need to acknowledge and appreciate the women in our lives, our mothers, our grandparents, our aunts, and all those who nurtured us and brought us to where we are today. Um, we've got quite an agenda for this, for this afternoon, and before we go into it, I'd like to introduce our CEO, Peter Boone, who'd like to speak to us, and we've then got a schedule that's really going to inspire each and every one of you, so Look forward to it and enjoy. Over to you, Peter. Well, wow, wow, wow! What a what a what a turn up, a turnout on the, on a fr on a rainy Friday afternoon. But you know, after rain, sun will start shining. And I think if I look at the weather forecast for the remaining part of the weekend, I think for all mothers here. It will be a sunny weekend, at least if you're living in the Western Cape. <laughs> but I've heard from our guest speaker that when she left Johannesburg, it was nice weather. Huh? We're speaking about mothers. We're speaking about women. Mother's Day is an extremely important day. And I think what you have said, Vaughn, made a lot of sense for me as an individual as well. Still having a mother is something I nurse. And although I'm mid-50s, or almost, my mother is still treating me as a child. You know, it goes, and when you speak to her via WhatsApp or via Zoom, she says, are you good, taking good care of yourself? Are you not working too hard? Um, and is Marie, your wife, taking good care of you? Um, but I think it's important, and I think for all the mothers here in the room, the last two years, for all of you, have not been the easiest one, given the fact that social interaction has been relatively limited, given the fact that we all went through the pandemic. You had to mother yourself, and you had to mother the others in your family. It has been challenging times for all of us. But I really appreciate is that the amount of mothers and women here in the room on this Friday afternoon. Because for me it's important that we, comp that we seek that engagement with each other again. We're coming out of two years of misery. Two years whereby we have been tested to the max in our daily lives, in the way we be could behave, in the way we could interact. And I think for a day, even though it's raining today, it's important that we mingle around, we take some photos with each other, and we catch up with each other, be it over the coffee machine, be it in the hallway, because our business is people business. And all of you, and I'm looking at the person now as <laughs> she's sitting there in the center, must get tired at a certain moment of all those Zoom calls or the team meetings that we have. Our business is people business, and there's nothing better 
than to be here with each other today. I have one word of advice for all of us here in the room, regardless if you're a mother, woman, or man. Take good care of yourself. Reflect on your own mental stage and your mental health. The times in which we are living, unfortunately, if I look at the geopolitical situation, are challenging. And yes, it will South Africa as well. But also look at from the bright side. We are living in a beautiful country. A country full of opportunities. A country that's growing. And pick and pay is playing a fundamental growth part in that growth and will play a fundamental part in that growth. And that's not only when I talk about the buying and selling of goods, is but what we stand for from a DNA perspective. Doing good is good business. Helping, supporting each other, and being there for the communities that we serve. We do that by working as one team. We're doing that by collaboration and cooperation with each other, and seeking open and constructive dialogues. And last but not least, we make sure, and make sure all of you here have fun in what you do, and make sure as well that you smile at least once a day, because that gives you positive energy. Mother's Day in the Netherlands as well is a very important day. You celebrate it on a Sunday, and then and normally mother gets breakfast on bed. You have a gift. I have a personal gift for all of you as well, but that's something Vaughn and I will hand out at the moment we are done with the session here today. And that is something we stand for in the Netherlands. Um, I hope you will appreciate it, uh, it and um, I wish you a fantastic Mother Days. And thank you for being here on this Friday afternoon. And with that, I hand over back to you, Vaughn. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for the words of wisdom and the food for thought. I think it's important that we acknowledge and, and value the fact that we've all taken the time to be here today. The weather is not great outside, but how wonderful is this venue with the beautiful flowers and the beautiful colors outside. So please, afterwards, make use of the photo booth, mingle, get to know each other more, uh, speak to each other, to Peter's point, engage. Enjoy the human element to this day that we've created. It's important. It's All of us are human and enjoy the human and need the human interaction. It's who we are. It's what we are. So let's value it and really just enjoy it. Um, so over to the main point of this afternoon is we're going to be inspired by an incredible dynamic woman who has a whole trilogy of real important things behind her name. And that's um, Olwe Tula Shabani, who is an award-winning media entrepreneur. She's a wife, she's a mom of three boys, and she's a dola. She's a speaker, she's an MC, she's a TV presenter, she's a blogger, and she's a social media content creator and creative producer. I think I need to come to you for some tips. <laughs> um, and most importantly, is she is the founder of the art of a superwoman. And at its core, the art of a superwoman is a content she development and a distribution media platform that sets out to educate, inspire, entertain, and influence its audience. And I like this by wholesome parenting, career, wellness, financial, and lifestyle choices. It's all about the holistic view to life, not focusing on one as opposed to the other or doing too much of one to the detriment of the other. The wholeness of parenting, career, the balance of wellness, financial affairs and lifestyle choices. So if we can welcome and warmly welcome Olwetu, we'd like to introduce you to the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. What an intro. I, I grew up in the slashy generation, so they call it. So we're slash this. 
slash that, slash this. And when then somebody comes up and introduces me, um, you realize, geez, did I include that many slashes in what I did? <laughs> did I take it too far? <laughs> um, Peter, now as you were talking, you reminded me of, um, I think it was five years into my husband and I's marriage. And um, my mother-in-law calls. And she says, hi, I've been trying to get hold of um, your husband. Where is he? And I was like, oh, no, he's just downstairs washing dishes. Don't worry. <laughs> Which means, what are you doing with my child? <laughs> you know, when I, when I married my husband, um, he had one thing that was for sure. He said, listen, I know how to make money, so you don't need to worry about that. But what I don't know how to do is make a bed to wash the dishes. One, two, three, four, as the last born of five children, you know. So when my mother-in-law heard that he was washing dishes, she went into a panic. And, you know, it's the beautiful moments that you monitor in mother. They know their children. They know their children individually. Um, and it's also the amazing moments when my mother-in-law will call us. And she'll call me and say, I'm busy eating. And I'm wondering, what are you eating tonight? Like, does she not know? <laughs> Surely I cooked, or somebody cooked, or there was food served. But, you know, it's the heartwarming moments of mothers when they just check in, and they check in from a place of just pure, genuine concern, leaving logic behind sometimes. And I think that's just the beauty of us as mothers. And, you know, I'd like to take a moment to honor all of us, um, ladies, gentlemen, and other gendered individuals in the room who have been mothered and who are mothers, um, whether you're an aunt, whether you're a grandmother, whether you're a sister that took on a motherly role, whether you're a cousin, um, or whether you're a friend who mothers your friend's children. There is such a beautiful and genuine thing about motherhood. And in my culture, everybody that you meet that r gives you a warmth or a kindness or empathy becomes mom. And this, so you know, Utima, when you meet somebody in the street and they have a warmth about them or they have just this feeling up, um, around them. Mother Mother's Day is also the same month, in the same month as workers day right and this is always such it is always such an intriguing thing for me because we all know the work of a mother is never done and during the pandemic i remember there was a lot of um conversation around the four c's of of women cooking cleaning caring and careers we had to balance all these things in the past two years and man have companies felt it and seen it and seen the impact that we have as not just women, but mothers. We are the number one nurturers. There've been so many Zoom calls I've been in where when the men have left the Zoom call, we chill behind us, the women um, and the mothers, and we check in on each other. I'm sure a lot of us have felt that or have seen it. Or that genuine pick up, picking up of a phone call when one mother you can feel or you can see in the Zoom call or in the meeting that something's not okay. And we know it as women. We feel it. We can see it. When somebody picked up that phone call and said, are you okay? Is everything fine? Or there was a child nagging in the background during this lockdown and we all checked in on each other or we checked in on some people that we knew within our circle. And when Peter mentioned the, you know, after today, have a coffee and, and chill, you know, relax and interact with each other. I'm like, we already do that. <laughs> there's, there's always somebody in the office that knows something about what your home situation is, what's going on, who's covering you, who's empathetic about you, who really, I mean, you could be missing a day off work and you called in sick leave, you know? Not, I'm not trying to snitch on us. <laughs> but they genuinely know that there's something you need to attend to at home as a mother. Coming back to that cooking, cleaning, caring careers. And so today I'd like to just honor all of us for not only 
covering ourselves and making it through the past two years, but literally covering each other and covering for each other as mothers and as women in the past many years. And you know what's funny? That Father's Day is on Youth Month, but I do not want to digress. <laughs> I don't want to digress. So, I mean, I've been quite contemplative over the past um, two years as I turned 30 during the pandemic. And I've been thinking a lot about the ways I've personally been mothered. And I hear that once you hit the 30 mark and, you know, you kind of cross over, you do get quite a little bit contemplative. I didn't quite think it would hit me like a huge wave like it has. And I've also thought about how perspectives on motherhood have kind of shifted us and placed us in certain positions where we almost posture ourselves to be this prim and proper people as mothers. We almost have this idea of what mother is and how we need to kind of put ourselves forward within not just the workspace, but also at home and more so in, in, in our careers and how we deal with our careers in this dog eat dog world, right? So being mothered throughout my own life by aunts, by grandmothers, um, by my own mother, um, by teachers, by my friends' mothers. And I went to boarding school, so I was mothered by a lot of my friends' mothers that were day scholars, and I'd go home with them on weekends. And it really shifted and adjusted my idea of the mother I wanted to be, and also what a mother is, or what a mother kind of looks like. And I've had many moments where I felt an interaction with a woman and thought to myself, whew, this one thinks she's my mother. And I've always wondered, where does this perspective, ooh, she thinks she's my mother, this one come from? And I've also been quite contemplative on whether the wisdom behind that and the point of reference comes from either a good experience of being mothered or comes from traumas of motherhood. And we've all dealt with either or, right? The traumas of being mothered or the absence of feeling a mother's warmth around us or from a perspective of being mothered and having your needs fulfilled. And then moving into the world where we all have different perspectives of what motherhood is and judging another one by how they mother and why their perspective of mothering is different. So earlier this year, on the 12th of February, which happens to also be my middle child's birthday, I swam the Midmar Mile. Now, if, I don't know, has anyone swam the Midmar Mile here? Or participate in the Midmar Mile? Watched the Midmar Mile? Seen somebody swim the Midmar Mile? It's quite a grueling process and takes quite a bit of training. So in training for the Midmar Mile, I took to swimming in a swimming pool about three to four days a week. And my goal was to eventually get to a place of at least swimming a mile in the swimming pool at around 35 minutes. Thought, okay, if I can do 35 minutes in the swimming pool, I'll be able to hit an hour mark, at the very least, in the open water. And so I did my training, and I think by a week before the mid-mar, I had hit 35 minutes of a mile in the swimming pool doing my laps. And so I headed for the mid-mar, and I was pretty happy with my time in the swimming pool. And I mean, I thought it was amazing, right? 30, 35, 36 minutes in the swimming pool for 1.6 kilometers, not too bad. Now it's Midmar Mile Day, and Hubby and, um, and I traveled to, to the Midlands, and we stayed close by, and we hit then the, the races in the morning, and the kids got into their own swimsuits, and they were swimming around the river, um, just on the outskirts of the river, and you know, it's the exciting energy of the Midmar Mile. Everybody's out there. I mean, Chad Leclerc was there, you know? Uh, Mark Fish was there to swim the Midmar Mile. So it's quite an exciting experience. You just experience people in a whole different setting. Um, and it's different. It's amateurs. It's professional swimmers. It's fun swimmers that are just there for the fun of it, and they're getting all dressed up, you know? Um, so we had also gathered a group of our girls, um, and we said, okay, let's, let's do the Midmar Mile this year. We're all at different levels of swimming. And the last time I'd done a river mile was in high school. 
So it had been quite a minute and you kind of forget all these things of swimming in open water. And we get into this water and the journey is choppy. When I say choppy, I mean choppy. So you get into the beginning, you get, I mean, you get through your registration and it's quite exciting. There's photos being taken. Everybody's grouping up and taking photos. It's all nice. And you get to the, um, to the entry of the water and we all go in together. And, you know, it's like we're all in. And we're there with my three other friends and we bolt off. So my first, so the, the first two are kind of ahead. And then one of my friends, Tobile, realizes that one of our friends is struggling behind. So she pulls back, and then I pull back with her. And then we help her. She had her goggles on wrong. And, you know, we help her along. We're like, mm, it's not a great start. <laughs> but we, then we, we, get, we get going. Um, Tobile and one of our other friends, they hit the water, and they're off. Um, somewhere in the middle between then the, the other one behind me, and, I mean, we're in close proximity to each other, and we swim. Um, the, then the water is choppy. It's up and it's down. And, you know, you kind of have to readjust your stroke as you go. So at one point, you're swimming breaststroke. At another point, you're swimming freestyle. Now, if you know anything about choppy water, <laughs> you'll know that at many points, you have to readjust your strategy, which is something that I pretty much wasn't practicing because I was swimming in the swimming pool. So now I'm in the choppy water having to readjust my stroke. I'm dealing with cramps. And at places where I'm dealing with cramps, I have to now kind of freestyle my way and kind of doggy paddle here and there to get the cramp out. And then I'm back to, you know, freestyling once that cramp is eased off. And then you get the speedboats that are doing like lifeguard checks then bringing the waves into you. And you're like, really? Anyway. So we get going, and at some point, I see all these people moving past me. And I'm pretty sure everybody that needs to have moved past me and that we went into the water with is gone. And this is a whole new heat of people. And surely I'm going to be the last person <laughs> in this body of water. But needless to say, I mean, I, like, okay, I haven't been in here too long. So I should be able to make my 35, 40 minutes at least. Shouldn't be all that bad. So we kept swimming, and I mean, I don't see my friends in front of me. A whole lot of people have moved past me. More people are passing me as I'm swimming in this water, and we all, well, I get to the end, and as I get to the end, I am so tired, and I'm so defeated, and I'm like, that was the toughest 35 minutes of my life. And the announcer announces, Olwe Tole Shabane coming in at 77 minutes. 77 minutes? Really? I trained to beat 35 minutes for 77 minutes to be announced at the end. Please. Anyway, there's the relief that comes with it either way. I made it. I got to the other end. Um, legs are weak. Body is exhausted. Has been congratulating me at the winning line. The kids are cheering me on. All three of my boys were there, and they were so proud of me. And you know what was the most beautiful thing? My friends that made their 35-minute mark were there to cheer me on as well at the end. And then we all went together to the finish line to go welcome our other friend who was just behind me. And you know, there were so many lessons that came out of this beautiful day. One of which, don't swim the mid -mile, mile on your son's birthday, <laughs> because he will never, ever forgive you for it, for making his day your day especially an Aquarius child. And the other lesson that I learned from this experience was there are so many moments in motherhood where we kind of time and we think that our timing and the things that we do will always work out. We train in a swimming pool and end up in the river. <laughs> and we need to be more kinder to ourselves. We need to be a lot more kinder to ourselves we will make it to the other side regardless. The other lesson was those that are ahead and have a sense that they've done a lot more training and, weight and, and lifting weights 
and doing their body of training and their strokes in the open water, we need to be able to lean back on those that don't have a point of reference and be able to be there on the other side for each other. And the other lesson that I'd also learned is watching the lanes in a swimming pool is so much more different than watching each other passing in open water. I so often, in, in, when I'm swimming in a swimming pool, I relate so much to Brene Brown when she says, when she's swimming in, in, in the swimming pool, um, she'll look to the lane next to her and have a kind of a comparison. I'm like, why is this one passing me? And this person just got into the pool. <laughs> they, they're on their first lap. And you've been in the swimming pool for 20 laps. And you're wondering, why is this person passing me? Let me try to swim a little bit faster so I can like turn before them. And, you know, in open water, as people are passing you, you have no perspective over how many heats people have gone in, especially if you swam the mid-mile mile, have seen the, the, the mid-mile mile. You don't know who's here for the fun of it. You don't know who's here for the professional training um, or who's here, who's a Rake Nyetlung or a Chad Leclo or a fit Mark Fish. You know, you don't know who is in here and is fitter than you are. But what you do know is that we're all on the journey to make it to the other end. We're all on the journey to say, sheesh, I did good, 77 minutes, not bad for open water. And there are those that will pass and there are those that will get ahead of us. And that too is okay. And I think what we also forget to do is to lean into the training of those that are ahead of us in this journey of womanhood and motherhood. And at the end, so I go to my husband, I'm like, oh, this, the one girl that was with us, she just, she said it's her first time doing the mid mile mile. How could she have done it in 30 minutes? And my husband was like, go ask her, go ask her. She said, oh no, I'm a trained yoga, I'm a trained yoga teacher, so I know how to breathe. <laughs> and you know, it's moments like that that taught me that it's not one size fits all for training on this journey, for training in motherhood, for moving in motherhood, my perspective is not going to come from being with like-minded people. It will come from diversifying my circle, from whom I tap into for, my, for the experiences in life. I've learned more about motherhood from my single friends. They've given me great perspective of understanding how they were mothered how they were parented, how they traumas adjusted, how their thinking is towards parenting, and why they choose not to be parents right now or delay the process of parenting or not parent at all, and how that can inform how I parent better. I've lost my place now because I've just been talking and talking. <laughs> my Midmar journey has also taught me how many times I looked at moms do well, excel, push forward, stretch forward and get their C-suite positions whilst I sit behind and I struggle as Oluetu. I was a mom at 21, second child at 23, third child at 27 or 28. And I remember sitting and thinking to myself, I could feel sorry for myself because I chose this journey and my friends are in C-suite positions and they've had to make certain compromises, or I could tap into their learnings and how I can thrudge myself forward in my career. I'm not self-made. I'm made by so many women who have mothered me to where I am and where I stand today. Art of Superwoman is not self-made. It's not just me. It's a community of women and mothers that have said, all right, you could do things like this, you could adjust your strategy in this way. We could do better if we collaborated in this way. You know, Oluetu, if you opened up an online store and you curated products that you really love, might do well. It could actually do well. How can we help you? How can we help you in your content creation at Art of Superwoman? How can we bolster you? How can we thread you forward? Moms that have mothered me. So post-Midma, as a group, we gathered, um, a, we had a bri and we reflected on each of our journeys. It was guys and girls, we were all together um, over bris and drinks. 
and making notes. And one conclusion we all came to, because we, we all had like, oh, this was my, this is how I did it, and this is how I made my time, and this is how I did this. And then there was one guy who goes, yeah, no, guys, there's no one strategy to this thing. We can't do it all. But what we can do is better our time. And we all need to learn to take from each other from different levels of who we are and just better our time. Let's just better our time on earth. Let's just make this journey fulfilling for all of us. Let's practice some empathy, some vulnerability. We may not have the meters in the river, but we need to not lose the perspectives of each other. The more mothers we tap into, the wider network of mothers we tap into, the better we will do at raising humans that have to work with each other in the cogs of building and rebuilding this country, South Africa. This means we must also acknowledge certain things, that our mental health is struggling as women and mothers, that our struggles and our pains are not in vain, but they're also, they need healing and they need work. And we cannot tap into each other and also help each other move forward if we don't have a vulnerable lens to the struggles that we have. We have to acknowledge how the past two years has taken a beating on our mental health as moms. At this very point, we have a very hurt and broken society. We have mothers that are in complete languish and anguish. These unaddressed wounds and these unaddressed um, traumas need us to actively work on them. We need mothers and mothers who are actively working on their healing too. So as we heal, we heal each other. As we heal, we also push each other towards our, the, the next person's own healing. We need mothers who, oh, sorry. And what I know for sure is that through storytelling and through telling our stories to each other and through sharing over that coffee and being vulnerable with each other, we heal the next person. So I implore us today to call up a mother, any mother, somebody that's probably not within your circle, or as we engage outside after this talk today, tap into another mother's perspective. Tap into another woman's journey and hear her side of the story. Listen without judgment. So what we built at AOS and the AOS community has also taught me that not only the moms I find myself drawn to enhance me, those that correct me and thrust me forward are those I least expected to be in their circle. It is women I least found myself drawn to but had to push myself, myself to engage with, who connected with me, who heard me, and without judgment, who gave me the best offers of advice. In a world that teaches us that business lessons and lessons in advancing one's career, um, or how to view politics, or how to climb up the social ladder, one must call on men, and that they should have the guiding paths as men, we should be challenging this as women and mothers. Same values. At the heart of it all, no matter how hard your mother loved you, no matter how strict your mother was, these values were at the heart of what she was trying to teach you. Allow yourself room to fall apart and pick yourself up in that trauma and in that, um, and in that pain and in those wounds that you have. But allow yourself room to form a circle around you of women that hold space for you, of women that are able to reinforce these values for you. So let's dismantle this strong ideology and this idea that strength is all we need. We all just need to respect each other's boundaries to a certain extent as well. We all just need to allow ourselves space to build on these values in being able to give back to each other and to form circles around each other as we did during the pandemic. And I find that 
more often than not, during the tough times, we find these values in, in ourselves. We find them in our, in our organizations as they reflect the, the organization's values to us. But we forget them when we turn those Zoom calls off or we turn off our PowerPoint presentations when we close the laptops and we forget to infuse them within our personal circles and within our homes. Let's bring them in. Bring them into your circles. Bring them into the circles of friendships and trust that we have. Bring those values. So let's dismantle the strong ideology because we don't all have the same training. But what we can do is build each other up. What we can do is reinforce the values into each other. Because at the end of it all, you don't know what you don't know, and I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what kind of perspective that you could give me that could turn on a light bulb inside of me. We're not all pro swimmers in this game of life, and it's okay to be an amateur and be in the river. We're all trying hard. We're here to fulfill our mission and to clock our time. We're here on our own terms, but with a mission to fulfill. We all have a God-given mandate. And even with our shaky legs, our beating heart, with our disappointment at our time, but with arms held open on the other side, our children will thank us. They will thank us for trying. And you'll be able to say, I did that. I did that. I tried my best. I was open to listening. I was open to bigger and wider community. And I did that. So if today you find yourself a huge success and you've ticked all of life's boxes and you can proudly say, I did that and you know, I am my wildest dream. I'm killing this motherhood or this life thing. I think you can call your mom and thank her. I think you can call her and thank her. If you still sit here today and you feel like you are struggling mentally, you're struggling spiritually, you're struggling physically to keep it together, call your mom. Call your mom and hear her perspective. Call your mom and listen with intent of the things she tried to say to you. Also, call a mom because we're all in this together. Your struggles are not yours uniquely. We're all going through the most. To be strong does not mean to sprout muscles and to flex. It means one's own human, sorry. <laughs> it means one's own numinosity without, flee, without fleeing, actively living with the wild nature in one's own way. It means to be able to learn to be able to stand what we know, it means to stand and to live. So if you stand here today and you're struggling and you're still going through the most, you don't have to be strong. Stand and live. Let live. Don't judge. Create a community. Thank you. All the way to thank you for that. Really, really some pearls of wisdom and some real food for thought. And as I sat there listening to you, I thought to myself, every mother has a nurturing side and knows and knows us. And when you said call a mother, speak to someone that represents a mother, I urge you to all do it when the opportunity comes. Because if you don't, a mother will call you. I have a, I have a story that's personal to me. I'd left, it was a few years ago, so just to clarify, things have improved since. I left the office on a winter's evening, it was dark, it was raining, and as I approached home, my few light went on, and I thought, oh, the last thing I want to do now is turn around for fuel. And I got home and I deactivated the alarm, but this, there was still a beeping noise, and I thought, what could it be? and it was my electricity. My electricity was running out and I had very little electricity on my meter. I hadn't eaten and I opened my fridge and all there was was water and eggs. And at that moment, my mother called. And I looked at my phone and I mustered up my strongest voice. And I said, hi Ma, 
And she said to me, what's wrong? <laughs> and I tried to act. And she said, Vaughan, what's wrong? And I said, Ma, I've got no fuel. <laughs> I've got no electricity and I have no food. And I'm really just tired. And she said to me, boy, just go to bed. All will be fine in the morning. And I looked at my phone. I remember actually doing this and thinking, what? Is that all you're going to say? <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're right. And it was about 8 o'clock at night. And I went straight to bed. And I thought to myself the next day, that conversation would have been so different if it was my father. Because I would have, firstly, would have asked, how did you let it go? You saw the few like, da, da, da. But I thought she knew when to call. She could recognize how I felt, and she knew the exact words. I didn't have the capacity to be lectured. She just said, go to bed, and all will be fine in the morning. The next morning, I woke up half past five, hungry, <laughs> my dad, drove to the engine, filled up my tank, got food from the 24-hour garage, bought electricity at the same time, and at six o'clock, or quarter past six, got home, and guess what? She calls again. And I said, hi, Ma. And she said, that's better. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I woke up feeling so much better, got the fuel, got everything I need. I'm going for my swim now. I'll chat to you when I'm on my way to work. And she said, you know what? Vaughan, remember, in, in life, you're going to encounter many defeats, my boy, but you must never be defeated. And I think it's to all of us. Mothers know, no matter how we try and conceal the way we feel, a situation, a moment, whatever we're trying to hide, they know. So call them before they call you, firstly. <laughs> and value your mothers. Value the love, value the support, value everything they represent to us because they know us better than we know ourselves. So that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to Tembi, who's going to be doing the... Um, Closing and the thanks. Thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. It's going to be literally two minutes. I just wanted to say a very big thank you to Peter for making the time to be with us today, to Vaughan for keeping it all together. Uh, all the way to that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, this, uh, she's actually all the way from Johannesburg and so glad to have you with us. Thank you so much. To the facilities team that put this all together, once again, amazing. And really to the most important people in this room, yourselves, everyone online, um, everyone in the Kensington office, you make this business work. You make this business what it is to the mothers, the uncles, the aunts, the fur moms, <laughs> to everybody uh, in the company. We really can't be what we are without you. So a big, big thank you. Have a good day on Sunday. Please, we've got a little something special for you when you lead out. But, and we've got lunch packs for you, for a little snack uh, to replenish you. And really, again, for myself, Tembi, thank you and happy Mother's Day. She always knows her place. She's got style, she's got grace. She's a winner.